And we are live with uh, Geeko Wishlist PC Build Guides uh, for the start of 2018. Um, I thought I'd do it um, towards the start of 2018, not quite Christmas time, a bit when people starting to get their money and finances together. I thought I'd release a bit of a build guide. Uh, a bit different to all the previous times now. We have a un Intel under 1000 under 2000 under 3000 and AMD under 1000 under 2000 and under $3,000 bills it is in Australian dollars this is from one particular site you can probably get better value elsewhere um, and depending on your regions and stuff like that and once Amazon in Australia comes more um, prolific I think would be the best word to describe it um, and a bit more reasonable on prices and stuff like that um, I'll then start using Amazon and stuff like that um, for buyers guides and stuff like that but for now I'm still using the same site as I've used before um, and here we go let's start with uh, the Intel under a thousand dollars like uh, like I said um, in my previous videos about this some parts you can swap and change out but these are systems that are complete so I'm not just talking about oh it's got the motherboard the, the graphics card the RAM the power supply and stuff like that I've actually in these prices you'll find that I include um, Windows 10 I'll include a keyboard a headset and a monitor with these prices so and that's where it comes to personal preference some people already have that stuff so then you could take that out and add more or take that out and drop the price so as you go through you you'll see the similarities in a lot of the builds um, with certain parts that I've used only because they're the cheapest and the best for that price so I'm not changing too much throughout the build but I've tried to put in a variety of different things here and there so here we go so we're going to start off with the Intel under thousand dollar build this is the wish list for this uh, we've gone for a deep cool frame it's an MATX frame um, ITX MATX the PSU goes on top I'm not a big fan of that but it works, it's simple, it's black, um, does have a disk drive bay at the front if you want five and a quarter, but other than that, as you see, it's very plain, very black, it doesn't really have any cable management whatsoever, but it's also got a little bit of an air filter thing through, through the side, um, but other than that, it's just a simple MATX case, there is nothing special about it, um, it's small, it's three, two, 392 millimeters, uh, from back to front um, and it's only 175 millimeters wide and it only weighs um, gross weight it's about four kilos so yeah it's it's gonna be light it's gonna do the job for what you want to do we're, we're talking cheap computers here so we're talking budget but $39 that's not too bad uh, the motherboard that we're going to sit inside there is the Asus H110ME um, obviously it's an MATX build, it's an $85 board, it can handle up to 2133 MHz DDR4 RAM, um, it's got your SAD as your USB, um, I love the little Intel gold heat, heat sink chipset, um, yeah it's got all your basic functions, it's got your front USB 3.0, um, Gen 3 PS, PCI Express, um, it's got your LED audio shielding stuff in through it. So it is a budget board. It is only designed to do budget um, gaming. I wouldn't call it a high class board. You wouldn't use it for, for overclocking or anything like that. We're not going overclocking on this price. Um, and as you see, it's a fairly nice layout. It's a brownish black colored board, probably more brown than black. Um, but like I said, it will do what you want it to do at this price. Um, also, slotting in that is the G4560. Um, it, you need a BIOS update if you're using the ZH or B series chipset boards for 7th generation. Um, so you, you will need that. It's $79. It's two cores, four threads, three and a half gigahertz base. Um, if you wanted to overclock it, you might get it you might get it to 4 gig, um, but you'd have to use uh, an expandable cooler on that. And it deals up to 2400 megahertz RAM off the top of my head it was. 
Um, yeah, or 21.33, so good fit for the board. Um, which obviously it went back up to 21.33. I just forgot what that was. Um, we're putting in Corsair Value Select 8 gig RAM stick, $139. Um, it's DDR4, obviously, and it's an 8 gig one stick, so it leaves the second slot free if you want to up it to 16 gig. Um, to do that, obviously, it's another $140, but then you'd probably get a set and you're looking at something completely different. Uh, graphics card, um, again, when price is so small um, and you, you're starting off and you've got nothing, um, I decided to go for the GTX 1050 compact 2 gigabyte. It's a very small card. Um, it does the job, what you need it to do. Um, the good thing about it is because it's so small, it's going to let a bit more airflow go through and around your case. Um, so overheating shouldn't be as bad. Um, no SSD in this build. We just went straight for a Western Digital one terabyte hard drive, sixty-five dollars, one terabyte. Um, really, with the processor and everything like that, the SSD. You could go an SSD, but you're paying an extra fifty bucks to get a hundred and twenty gig one, um, or somewhere around there. It's not worth the money. Um, just go one terabyte hard drive, add an SSD later. Um, because honestly, with this build, you'll be adding stuff to it later on anyway. Um, power supply. Now, I can go cheaper in the power supply, and you can do it if you want. But honestly, don't stick to something that's reputable. Rep reputable. Um, so something like a Corsair, a Silverstone, a Seasonic. Uh, any of those types of power supplies are really good. Don't go for the cheap, cheap nasties. Um, because you'll just damage your system in the end. Um, that's $49, it's a 450 watt power supply, it will do you for now, and probably a slight upgrades in that. Um, so here comes the finicky stuff, um, LG 21 inch monitor, $119, it's the cheapest I could find. It's a monitor, you don't have brilliant graphical um, ability in the graphics card and the processor, so you don't need a 4K monitor or a monitor with G-Sync and all this sort of stuff on there. Save your money, $119, 21 inch, it gets you playing. That's what the idea is. I actually use two 21 inches here um, to the left and right of me. Um, and my main one's actually only, I think, about a 24 inch. So there you go. I don't use much bigger than that. Um, at the moment, um, the best value you could find in a wireless mouse desktop keyboard was $25. It's Microsoft. It's a wired desktop 600 keyboard mouse combo. Look. It's not the best keyboard and mouse that you'll ever see, but again, for $25, it's a mouse with a scroll wheel, um, and it's a keyboard um, that does have a numpad on it, um, and it's wired, which means you don't have to worry about batteries and stuff like that. Um, yeah, um, so other than that, you've got your headset. Um, again, TTE Esports uh, Shock 3.5-inch gaming headset black, $55. Again, you don't have... All beautiful audio sound and stuff like that on these boards at the cheaper end of the scale. You don't have dedicated um, audio equipment, so you don't really need dedicated audio headphones. Um, but for $55, it's a gaming headset. It looks comfortable. I don't own it, but it's got nice big square ears. Um, it's got a mute button. Um, they, they collapse, they fold up, which is quite nice. So, all in all, it's they will do the job. They'll get you playing games and you'll be able to talk to people. Your sound won't be that great. Um, but at the end of the day, you're starting off gaming. You're not going to be going out playing, you know, PUBG in 4K in, with this build. Basically, this build will probably do you uh, maybe Dota, uh, League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm, um, and maybe says go on everything low. Um, but yeah, it's a basic build. It's a basic build to get you into computers. And you can build on this. Um, with this board, for instance, um, you know, if you've got more money, you know, got a couple hundred dollars more, um, you could probably get a better, well, I'd get a better graphics card first, but then you could up your processor on this board. You've already got DDR4, so you can go 16 gig of RAM. Um, you know, you can upgrade these parts, so it can be better. Uh, the power supply, is solid at the moment, but if you go too big in graphics cards, like you go jump up to a 1080, obviously you're going to probably need a bigger power supply, but if you go 1080, you'll be buying a new power supply, you'll be buying a new processor and motherboard anyway. So there you have it, that's a $983 with Windows 10 3264-bit USB drive. 
Um, so there's $17 leeway there, so you could probably get a bit better headset, you get a bit better keyboard, you might be able to get another, uh, just a slightly better monitor, um, depending on your graphics cards and your hard drives and stuff like that, or change your case, you could add $10 to change your case a bit. But for that type of money, $983, that's a complete set. Not bad, like I said, it is a very bare minimum gaming PC that would just start you off. It would be good for things like Facebook and stuff like that as well. So if someone just wants a computer to work from home or something like that, and they just want to do Facebook and stuff like that, watch the odd movie, this will quite handle it. Um, Alright, so that is the Geek of Release Intel under $1,000. And to back that up, we're going to go to the AMD side. So you'll find out that this case is exactly the same as last time. The motherboard currently is the GAA320MA with an M.2 slot. It's $85. It can handle up to 32 megahertz DDR4 RAM. It's got four DIMM slots. Um, so you can really add some, some um, memory into that if you want to. Um, it's got enhanced BIOS features, all this blah, 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 blah. You know all this stuff. Uh, anyone that watches my videos or anybody else's tech videos. And you'll see the layout here. So you've got your four DIMM slots, which is very handy if you're going to add more RAM to it. Uh, you've got your CPU, CPU fan header, your system fan header. Um, I'm pretty sure you've got another system fan 2 header there. So I think there's two system fans and one CPU header. Um, it's got USB 3.0. Obviously, you've got your M.2 slot, which is, I think, at the back of the board. Oh, it's at the front here. And then you've got, obviously, your extra stuff there. You've got your audio cutout there, so just to, to cut the noise coming through. HDMI, DVI. It's got your PS2 ports, uh, which is kind of handy these days. It doesn't have many USBs there, as you can tell. It's got your LAN port. Um, so it's a nice budget little board. It's not anything fancy it's not supposed to be fancy this is budget um, okay currently this company is styled out of the a6900 two core again we go on two core uh, this product's been discontinued that's great that really helps me out a lot that's just happened over the last day or so um, as you can tell it was $69 and if I was to um, go for something like that I'm trying to have a look at what socket gen were we here um, as a name for a6500 so I was basically going for whatever was the cheapest um, wow you're probably gonna have to go for something like an AMZ Ryzen 3 1200 at $139 it's gonna throw the budget right out now that they don't do that um, APU oh that's an APU did I muck up my boards? I think I've mucked up my boards here. I think I've made a big mistake. Now it's an AM4. Now it's a socket AM4. There we go. It just happened to be an APU. Um, CPUs. And they're different again anyway. They're thread rippers. So this was good as of the time that I did it. Um, so if you find one of them at $69, there's not much I can do about it right now. Um, obviously it would change the bill completely if I had to take $100 out. Um, that's for $69. Again, one Corsair Value Select DDR4 8 gig stick of RAM, $139. Um, and for the graphics card, we went an RX 560, $189. It's a two gig overclock card. Um, again, it's just a graphics card to get you playing some games. Um, you you wouldn't be using um XSplit and stri and um broadcasting and playing with this graphics card. Let me tell you that. Um, GDR5 two gig RAM, 700 megahertz uh, memory clock. It is a very base um, graphics card at 189. Again, Western Digital one terabyte blue. We've already been through the hard drive ideas. Same power supply. The monitor again 21 inch. This one's from AOC, $119, same price. We still stock with the same headset, the same keyboard, and the same USB drive at $993. Obviously, that would change if you can't get the AMD A6. It's probably going to be blasting outside that 1000 It's probably going to be more like an $1,100 build um, if you have to go to the X3 processor. All right, so that is your AMD under $1,000 build. Like I said, 
a lot of this stuff is going to look the same in the different builds. So we're going to go back to the wish list and we're going to start this time. We're going to do the AMD $2,000 build and then we're going to go back to the Intel. So here's where it changes a lot with AMD. You will start and as you see, I've got the Cougar MX330 uh, windowed mid tower case. It's a beautiful looking um, case. It's got your front air takes. It's got your two USB um, 3.0s and two USB 2.0s on the front. As you see, there is some cable management holes in it. It's got water cooling support. It's got air cooling support left and center, and maybe up the middle. Um, it's ATX micro ATX drive compatible. And at the back, as you can see, you've got a little bit of cable management room, how it cuts in here and goes up. And there it is from the other side. So you've got some cable management if you want to do ITX. Um, you'd be probably you'd be using these slots here and maybe that one there. Um, obviously, if you're doing ATX, you'd be going out this side and micro ATX, you'd be off out here. Um, it's actually got a shroud for your power supply, so it's got a cover for it. Um, and as you can see, your radiators and that can fit up there. You've got room in the top. So it's quite a good case. There we go. There's another angle. That's your window on the side. It's pretty. Um, it's got air filters at the top as well. So it's it's a pretty case. And you're getting that for $49. I think that is quite classy for $49. That's why I chose it. Again, I'm just changing, changing the cases around here and there. I'm not going for the overkill. All right. So... Under two thousand dollars, all of a sudden you jump up into uh, from AMD side, you jump up into the AX three seventy gaming K three motherboards. This is a full ATX motherboard. It comes with all the wonderful things for a gigabyte. It's got the ambient LEDs, it's got amp up audio, it's got smart fan five, it's got hybrid pan fan pin headers for to do with the water cooling pumps and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's got it comes with software BIOS. It's got ambient LEDs. Great. Not only if you're showing it off, having that nice window there, it's going to look nice. Um, it's got smart headphone amp. Not too sure what that does, but it's got your noise guard and everything like that. Um, USB DAC up to adjustable voltage USB port, um, which obviously is going to be handy to some people. Um, not so much for me. It reckons it's VR ready, but this build you wouldn't throw in a VR um, or anything like that, to be honest. Um, killer Ethernet, fast on board storage with M.2 slots. As you see, it's just got piles and piles of information about this thing. We're just going to skip right through it. Um, if you want to search it, um, you can search for AX370 and it's a gigabyte board K3. As you can see, it's just got the one PS2 port. You've got USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports everywhere on this one. Killer Ethernet and HDMIs. There's your audio. And as you see, there's a sample of your lighting. So, especially if you like a red build, um, Gigabyte Gaming, um, you've got your 8 pin, so it, it's good for overclocking. It will overclock. It's probably not the best board for overclock, but you will get slight overclocking with this board. Um, obviously, you've got your SATA Express sockets actually pointing outwards, which I love on boards. I don't like them pointing up rather than pointing out. Uh, you've got your USB 3.0s and USB 2.0 headers. And there's your front panel headers. So it's got everything. It's got a couple of system fans, CPU fans, um, two PCIe-X6, oh, sorry, one PCIe-X16 slot. Then it's got a PCIe-X2, PCIe-X4, and PCIe-X1. Oh, and a PCI-X3 slot. And obviously, it's got your M.2 stuff in there as well. So, that is, there's USB 3.0, by the way, and you got USB 3.0 there. So, you got dual USB 3.0 for front headers if you want it. And if you see there, that's got CPU fan and CPU optional, which is for your water pumps and stuff like that. So it's a very handy board to have if you're going to go what are that's the gigabyte ax370 it's 209 dollars at the moment then we're going to go down to the amd ryzen 5 1500x processor with the wrath spire cooler um, it's 1500x you can overclock this thing and with that board it will do a little overclock um, with the wrath cooler it will overclock a little bit but not you're not going to get extremely good overclocks out of it um, it's 3.7 
Kipke on the turbo clock speeds, 16 meg cash, four CPU cores and eight threads. It is unlocked. Um, it's the no LED Rathspire cooler. And it comes in at $239. As you're seeing right now, we are jumping up because we're coming in with the Ryzen DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM at $279. Um, it's 15, 15, 15, 39. Um, remember, with AMD and overclocking, um, clock speed is everything. Um, and it says here whether it's mobile, RPG, or FPS, the cost effective kit will keep your system performing at its peak. Um, it was designed for the gaming series with the AMDs. And this is G School products. So, G School, very good RAM manufacturers. And they kind of look pretty. It's got the red in there. Um, yeah. 1.2. Zero volts, 2400 megahertz dual channel kit, dual channel kit, and obviously if you wanted to go up to 32 gig, you could you know do another couple of sticks here. Um, the graphics card is the ROG Radeon RX 580 Strix Top Gaming uh, Gaming Top Edition, eight gigabyte. Jesus, that's a mouthful. Um, 580 dollars effectively. Um, three fan fans on it. It's got your Aura Sync, which is your um, RGB lighting. It's got your back plate. It's got your thermal take, um, your, your heat spreaders and stuff like that. Everybody knows stuff about graphics cards these days. I'm just going to give a quick run through. Um, so this is really the last entry graphics cards before you get up to um, their new stuff. Um, and I'm trying to think of what they are. The 64 and the 48 core um, graphics cards. I can't even remember what they're called right now. Um, so this is the top of the range graphics card until you go up to the next architecture. And I'm trying to think of what it is. Oh, the Vega, the RX Vega 56s. And they're $1,200 cards. Um, to be honest, the RX 580 series is good enough for anybody. Um, if you're an AMD fan, like I said, this is AMD band. This is an AMD build. So respect that it's all AMD stuff. You can change it to NVIDIA if you want. Okay, so that's pretty much the top of the range card. 1431 megahertz on the clock in overclock mode, eight gigabyte uh, GDR5 memory, and it's got RGB DirectX 12 support, HDMI 2.0 times two, two display ports, and a partridge in a pear tree. That has everything. All right, so again, this is the difference. What we did, we only added 120 gig um, SSD to this build only and we went back to the digital one terabyte hard drive so basically 120 gig get your operating system get a few games on there and that will do and then everything else you do you just put on the hard drive it's very rare that you need uh, more than 120 gig on an SSD unless you're doing some fast video editing and this is not the build for you if you're doing that uh, the power supply we actually went quite cheap on the power supply at this time $62 there's heaps better power supplies out there that are in that $130 price point that would probably do the job but this time I decided to go for the graphics card and the memory and lowered the um, the power supply but the power supply will handle them uh, Thermotake light power gen 2 650 watt power supply no bells and whistles to this um, it's not modular or anything like that, so you're going to see cables, um, but, you know, just use some black tape or something, cover the cables up, it, it will look fine. Uh, the monitor, we went for a 24-inch FreeSync gaming monitor, it's $179, um, it's true, it's 23.6 viewable, 1080p monitor, it's equipped with AMD FreeSync um, to help out with those AMD problems, but not that you will. Um, 75 hertz plus AMD FreeSync, um, so it has a hertz range of 47 to 75 effectively. And they talk about the eye comfort, and it comes with a bonus HDMI cable included. Um, so yeah, I can't even remember what ports were on there. Um, VGA, HDMI, and a display port. So it's got your DP on there, um, which is great. $179. And then um, headset, we went the Corsair Gaming Void surround sound headset, $65. I've got the RGB voids on right now. They are extremely comfortable. Um, these ones are $65. Um, they're actually on sale at the moment. They're usually $100. So for $65, that's a great headset. Nice and comfortable. 
the microphone I'm currently using at the moment. Yep, I'm not on mute. That's good. Um, like I said, they're comfortable as hell, and they come with a beautiful little Dolby headphone USB adapter. Um, not that I use it. Don't use it. Um, I just use the standard stereo. I'm not into Dolby. That's $65. Uh, we upped the gaming bundle to the Cooler Master Devastator 3 gaming bundle. Uh, my partner um, son uses this. It's a gaming combo with color. Uh, it's got seven colors. It's not full RGB. It's got like your red, green, blue, yellow, light blue, purple, and white. Um, and your mouse. It's got um, some play functions and stuff like that. He uses this keyboard. He likes it. Um, it works. It works. It's a membrane keyboard, but it works. It's kind of pretty. It kind of fits in your build. Um, the mouse isn't too big. It's not too small. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I've used it a few times um, in an emergency, and it worked well. So I don't have a problem um, going for this type of stuff. Um, they do do an upgrade of this one. I'm not too sure if it's in the bundles. Uh, where it comes, I think it's slightly different. Um, I think it's a memchanical one, uh, which is membrane mechanical um, hybrid, and it's really nice to use as well. Um, that's fifty-five dollars. That's a mouse and keyboard, and obviously you got your Microsoft Windows. So all that comes in at nineteen hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So that is really pushing that limit to two thousand. Um, again, you could drop some stuff, add some stuff. Um, if you wish, um, all in all, good build. You will be playing your FPS shooters in pretty much in high uh, for most of them with that gaming card and the processor. There's um, as the way as AMD goes, that graphics card is the best until you get up into those Vega series cards. Um, so there's not much more you can do with these, but I'll show you the three thousand dollar build at the end there. Um, but there's not much difference with that. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the Intel side of things again. Lots happen once you jump up a thousand dollars. We went with the Cooler Master Box Lite 5 mid tower case. A lot of people have been hearing about this, there's been a lot of advertising about this case. And I actually saw one in person the other day, and they are great. Um, you got to choose your style, um, so you get customization trim colors. You get 3D printing, they actually have the print guide, so you can actually print them out yourself. Um, ATX, Micro ATX, Mini ITX compatible. It's got your um, power supply cover there. It's got basic cable management. I wouldn't say it's great, but basic. Um, it can fit all different types of um, heat sinks and stuff in it. Um, you can go for the extra long graphics cards or the shorter ones. It, 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 the sky's the limit with these things. You can have the dark mirror uh, front panel because your case doesn't have to be boring. So it looks like a mirror finish and then when you light up your fans it goes in colour. It looks fantastic. It really is a good case. ATX, micro ATX, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Um, as for cooling, it does do some front liquid cooling, 240 mils. I think you can even do a 360 mil limited uh, depending on the thickness of your fan and your radiators. Um, and rear obviously does 120. There is no top liquid cooling support um, with that. With this build, um, fan support, you've got your front and your rear. So in graphics cards, well, you can go up to 400 millimeters long or 16.14 inches, which tells me there if you actually get rid of the HD cage or something like that, because um, you've got your two slots there. So it just depends on what you do. Um, it's got SSD slots around it, so it it's a beautiful looking case. And for the price, um, $69, a great case to buy, and you can modify it later if you want. Um, and the three custom colors actually are included in the box. That's really cool of them to do that. So you've got your black, your white, and your red. For $69, that's, that's a bargain case. Oh, what have I done? Oh, okay, so again... Intel, uh, this site has sold out of some stuff since I started doing this. Uh, if the motherboard we're going is the Intel Z270 Gaming K3 motherboard, and I just, yep, that's all right. Um, it's overclockable, um, it does up to 3866 megahertz DDR4 memory, 
Not that most people would go that. Obviously, we're talking gigabyte again. So we're talking hybrid fan headers, smart fan 5, blah, blah, blah. You heard me say it just before. Um, does the fuel speed thing. It's got diagnostic LEDs in this one. Um, support for DDR4, XMP up to 3866 megahertz and beyond. And it's got an asterisk there. And I'm not too sure what the asterisk means. It's the XMP profile support may vary depending on the memory module. Um, so... It can go up. Um, it's got stainless steel one-piece industry-leading ultra-durable PCIe armor. Basically, it's making um, the sockets stronger so they don't fall out when you put your big-ass graphics card on them. Um, so as we're coming down, we're going to have a look at this. Um, obviously, PS2 combined. Um, USB slots everywhere. I think that is a USB-C port. You've got your HDMIs there. Um, and again, Partridge and Petri, you can see LED lighting strip here to so the the audio stuff doesn't get mixed up with the motherboard. It creates less noise, as we know. Here's your little lighting strips up here. It's got your turbo stickers. There's your eight CPU um, pins um, for your 12 volt. Again, it is overclockable. You're going to need them. You got your system fan headers. You got your system fan and optional fan. You got another system fan here. Uh, USB 3.0s, you've got two of them. Uh, I'm not too sure what that one is right there. You've got your USBs, another system fan adder. So, you got LED demo mode. You're not going to need that. Oh, front audio. Most people don't use that these days, I don't think. Because you get your better audio out the back. Alright, so that is that for that board. Oh, it's got your M2 slots and there's your... Thingy jiggies, your PCI Express 16x slots, and obviously your socket with plenty of room around it for your coolers and your heat sinks. So we're going to put that with an i5 7600K. This is the chip that I actually use personally. Um, I love it. I think it's brilliant. I can actually stream and play games at the same time and not have any effect whatsoever. Um, so it's the i5 6700K. It's Base is 3.8, it's boost is 4.2. Oh, you add a water cool on that, and this bitch flies. And I think that's what I haven't done on this one. I haven't done it on this one, and I should have. I've got to put the CPU cooler in there. So this is going to change slightly as we go. Um, there's no CPU cooler in with them. Um, you can use um, the old Intel fans. It says it's got VR support, but seriously, you want to go higher if you go on VR. Um, everybody knows about this. It's one of the most popular um, Intel chips in a long, long time. Um, does everything you need. Four core, four threads, um, TTP, 91 watt. There's not much else I can say about this. It does have onboard graphics, but not that you'd use it. It doesn't include a fan or a heat sink or a thermal paste. And this is where I've stuffed up because I did have a cooling part in this and I've obviously mucked up, but water cooling, what I would do with this, um, I would just get a nice, good liquid cooler. Um, I like the Cooler Master Side on 120V Plus. That's lovely, $79, something like that. Or the Hyper, if you're going air cooling, um, CPU cooling, if you're going air, um, the big white stuff's nice, but the Cooler Master Hypers 212X CPU cooler it usually does a job, $49. Uh, I've seen, seen some people using the 411R um, and the 612, but honestly, the 212X is probably one of the most popular coolers around. And value for money, $49 is a really good value. You can add that onto it. Um, I'm not too sure how much more that's going to add. It's going to take it over the 2000 but you can you can move money here and there with these anyway. It's not necessity. So with that, we're going to do the Kingston HyperX Fury 16 gig bit, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 Black, $269. It's 2400 megahertz, 15, 15, 15, CL15, 1.2 for 4 volts. $269, if you want to add another two sticks, you can to make it 32, but 16 gig is plenty in this build. Now, the graphics card, every time I click on a graphics card, they're sold out, they're moving. Um, a 1060 is good in this price range. Um, 
obviously I had the 499 MSI 1060. You can go lower than that um, for a cooler, or if you've got the money, you can go higher. Um, you've got your 1060, 6 gig, so you're looking at about a 6 gigabyte one, 459, uh, that's 3 gigabyte, 419, um, 499 again for an Asus Turbo. So you're looking at 14, 419 up to about 500, oh, up to 600, but generally $500 is a reasonable price point. Um, it's a 1060 overclock 6 gigabyte, um, VR ready, blah, 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 17, 15, 59 megahertz um, on the boost clock, um, 6 gig GDR, GDDR5 memory and a memory clock speed of 8000, display port, HDMI, um, and DVI-D sockets on there. Again, great for what it does. Um, fantastic card. Um, I would definitely go for something like that. That's your $500 card. Um, SSDs, um, not much to explain. We've gone 120 gig, just like we did with the AMD $2,000 build. We've done the Western Digital Blue. We went for a Cooler Master, Master Lite 600 watt power supply at $75. Um, it, again, not modular. It is just a cabled, standard cable CPU. will do everything it needs to do. It's AD plus um, white. Uh, we've gone for the same monitor, the AOC E27 21 inch monitor, $119. Again, swap and change them out as you please. We've gone for the same headset, the same keyboard mouse combo and the same Microsoft and that's in at 1998 again you'd have to add a cooler to that so you might have to drop down your graphics card or something like that maybe your motherboard um, so you can fit under that 2000 but if you've got your headset and keyboard and stuff and your monitor obviously you're gonna have a few hundred dollars there to spare so you could get like a really good water cooler for it and stuff like that so that is to get coverage Intel under 2000 so what I'm going to do is make it really different, which we're going to go to AMD under $3,000 build. And this is really a bizarre build because this is pretty much the best you can get, which is a part of the $2,000 AMD build. Um, I went for the Fantex Eclipse P300 tempered glass. It's got heaps of cooling opportunities. It's got your covers. It's got your beautiful glass in there. It's got your um, RGB illumination strips. Um, it looks really cool. Um, I haven't seen it up close and personal, but it's talking about everything. It's talking itself up like it's the best thing since sliced bread. Great cable management up the side here with little clips to block them in. Um, SSDs on the back. It's got SSD mounts in the front. It's got great capabilities. Um, um, I was going to say, the CPU cooler is 160mm. I don't think it tells me radiator cooling front up to 240 or 280 um, and the rear 120 but you're not going to go for a huge water cooling rig from this RGB fusion MSI mystic light sink and aurora sink so it actually syncs up with all the big brands gigabyte MSI and ASUS with the RGB strip which is very very good to do um, we're going to put this AMD build with the M7 ACK motherboard. $359. It comes with its own um, Wi-Fi card, um, USB 3.1 gen. It's got everything in this thing. It is a beautiful looking board. It does everything. It's going to overclock the snot out of everything. It's got lights everywhere. Your 8 pin, you got 4 DDR4 slots with the metal strips. It's got heaps of room for heat sinks and stuff like that. You've got fan headers everywhere on this board. I'm just trying to get them all. I can't remember where they all are. Um, you've got USB 3.0. You've got an actual um, GPU reset button, I'm pretty sure. CPU reset or BIOS reset button right there. It's got the BIOS um, uh, readout there so you can tell if they're error codes. There's another little switch. It's got your lighting strips. It's just a beautiful looking board. And like I said, it actually comes with the um, 
wireless LAN and Bluetooth, which is AC dual band, 5 gigahertz up to 867 megabytes per second speed. It's got Bluetooth 4.1, and it's also got obviously killer Ethernet um, ports inside it as well. It is a beautiful board. It does everything. It's got your RGB Mystic Light stuff in there, which will sync up with that case. So you can change your colors here and there. Um, it's certified for League of Legends. Here's a Storm, Overwatch, CSGO, Battlefield, Data, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. Love that saying. $359. One of the best boards you can buy on the market without going crazy in price. Um, and we're going to match it up with AMD Ryzen 7 1700X processor for $429. 8 core, 16 thread, 3.4 gigahertz, base clock, 3.8 gigahertz precision clock. With XFR technology, it is 95 watt in power, and you're gonna need a heat sink and fan for this baby. You're gonna need a decent one, and I went with the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML120 RGB AIO cooler. It's RGB, it's a cooler, it's $85, and it will silence it. It's one of the only ones, and here it goes here. It actually tells you that it syncs up with pretty much everything aura rgb um, fusion mystic and as rocks or as rock whatever you want to call it rgb led so it syncs up with all them as you see it's got hyperx there um, and so it's going to do the job it is also one of the only ones that i know of right now that actually works with the aim 4 socket some of the other ones that you'll see out there don't have the aim 4 socket this one does so it's inbuilt compatibility into the aim 4 socket which is fantastic when at a time when there's not many out there that will do it um it's brilliant so that's the go uh ram exactly the same as in the two thousand dollar amd build 289 dollars don't really have to go into it it's the G Skill Fortis Ryzen RAM, 16 gigabytes, that's about it. The graphics card is exactly the same as that $2,000 build. It's the MSI Radeon RX 580 Armor Overclock, 8 gigabyte. Actually, I think that's slightly different to the other one. It pretty much does exactly the same, except it's got like a black white look um, and the fans stop under 60 degrees or something like that. Um, it's got that armor look to it, which I kind of like. I kind of dig. It's got your display ports and HDMI ports and DVIs. And you can do you can do crossfire with the bridge on that. Um, the SSD, however, I decided to go for a 500 gig SSD at $209 um, and a one terabyte Western Digital hard drive. Um, why? Because I can. I had money to burn. I thought 500 gig you could put nearly everything on there that you want, and then just put movies on your um, standard hard drive there. Uh, power supply: Silverstone Strider Titanium 700 watt. Again, these are bits that I've put in there that are probably overkill for what you need. But if you're going to upgrade it, you might decide to go less in the RAM stakes. Um, sorry, less in the graphics card slates or get two of them and get less in the SSD. Um, and you might want two of those graphics cards. And the 700 watt will, will deal with it. It's the titanium. It is a beautiful looking power supply. Um, they are tiny for what they are. They have black thin cables i wish i had one on me right now i actually have the smaller version of this power supply i've got like a 650 watt power supply and it's got like the stranded cables so you don't even need to sleeve them if you don't want to um, you can because obviously it's fully modular and they are tiny now how tiny i'm talking 150 mil tiny where some power supplies out there are 160 180 mil power supplies this thing will fit in nearly every case you can do but an SFX. Um, that's why I love these power supplies so much. They are brilliant at $209. It will handle all your overclocking needs, everything fine. Uh, monitor, well, top of the range, um, not quite top of the range, top of the range in most your stuff AMD. But I thought, let's put a free sync in there. Let's get a curved monitor. 27 inch, $279. It's very similar to actual my monitor that I use here, except I have 144 megahertz and mine's not free sync. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful looking monitor. It does everything you need to do. It's got display port, HDMI port, um, and the colors on it look fantastic. The stand doesn't look that great, but 
Honestly, when you're spending this much money, most people have a monitor stand anyway. Um, pretty sure you can do your tilts and stuff like that on there. Um, but anyone that wants to know about that, they can watch this video, pause it, and read it. Um, it's the 27 inch full HD curve monitor with FreeSync for 279 and headset Corsair HS50 gaming headset $89. It's got nice big ear cups, it's got comfort, it's got sound, it's Discord certified. I don't know if that means anything to anybody. It's got your mute button and volume button on the side. Um, supposedly it works with the Xbox One, the PS4, the Nintendo Switch, and the PC. Uh, the Microsoft, you kind of need an adapter for or something for it to work, or something like that. Um, it's got your microphone coming out there, fully adjustable. I like it. It looks really nice. haven't used it. used Corsair headset myself, as you can tell. Um, it seems to be working well for me. So $89 for that. Um, and because we're on the Corsair hunt and we're going for a $3,000 PC build, we need a good keyboard and mouse combo. Uh, this is 139, it's a K55 Plus Harpoon RGB keyboard and mouse. Um, it's 3 zone dynamic RGB lighting. It's got all your usual stuff, volume controls, quite responsive keys. got multiple key anti-ghosting. It's got soft, soft rubber wrist rest. The mouse is very similar to the one that I'm using right now. It looks like a strafe, but it's got a Harpoon RGB, 6000 DPI. It's lightweight, it's contoured. It's got a accuracy sensor, RGB lighting obviously, textured molded rubber around the side for better grip, programmable buttons. And I'm pretty sure the keyboard is a membrane keyboard. It's not mechanical, um, but it doesn't really matter. Um, again, this is for people that are spending a lot of money that's just getting into it. But by this stage, most people will have a decent keyboard and mouse anyway. But $139 for a keyboard and mouse, of course, there that's a pretty good value, and again, we got Microsoft right here, and that all comes to $2,979. Like I said, I splurged a lot on that. You could save a lot more money on that by going for a cheaper SSD, you could save 100 bucks there. Um, if you already had your headsets and your monitors and all that, you could save like 500 600 bucks there easy, maybe even 700. You nearly get that down to $2,000 once you take out headsets, this, that, that. Um, change that down to a lighter power supply, change that down. You could probably get all the base stuff for the $2,000 price point, definitely 2500 for everything there. So that is the Geek of Leash under $3,000 build. And we're up to the final one. It's the Intel under $3,000 build. We've already been through that case. The motherboard is very similar to the AMD one I just showed you. It's the MSI Z370. So as you would see, it's got everything. It's got the audio layout. It's got the the boost memories. It's got your different panels. It's got your Type A connectors. It's got a gamer's BIOS. Don't believe in that crap. Um, so it's the Z370 Gaming Plus board. There's your extra power. You've got CPU fan headers and system fan headers freaking everywhere. It's a very beautiful board with the black and the red. Uh, there's your audio cutoffs and you got USB 3.0 headers, you got M.2 slots. It's a great board and as you see you got your DVI, you got a couple of USBs, a couple of more, a couple more, um, PS2 ports. So it is a smick looking board, not as good as the last one, but $199. Um, the CPU is the i5 8600K, it's the 1151CL, it's the latest Intel, it is the 8th generation i5, it is Coffee Lake, it is 6 cores, 6 threads, 3.6 gigahertz base, 4.3 gig max, 9 meg cache, and 95 watt TDP. Again, does not include a fan or heatsink. I This time I went for the Corsair Hydro series, it does work on these, it's one of the ones that um, was listed as the CL socket. Um, not here, but on their website, it listed the CL. Um, so it's got your typical Corsair. Nothing flash about this. It's just going to be a good cooler. $79. Memory, we went for 16 gig, 3000 megahertz, Team D-Force Dark Black. I've never heard of this stuff before. 
it looks really cool so i thought i'll mention it 3000 megahertz 16 18 18 8 18 38 1.35 volt um uses xmp 2.0 smart overclocking overclocking it's got extra armor on there um from what i look looked at that you can actually slide the only four piece heat spreader on the market you can actually unscrew the heat spreaders and stuff like that um suppose we've got one step overclocking technology and in build into it but um yeah so you can actually change the heat spreaders and that in it the only four piece heat spreader in the market is so you could actually take that off and custom paint it yourself as well which would be pretty cool that comes in at 300 um, graphics card we've gone to a 10, 1070 Ti titanium 8 gigabytes when you're going these days unless you're going crazy this is a $900 graphics card you're really pushing out 1607 megahertz of base 1683 boost overclock mode just got cuticles coming out your butthole it's got these special fans on it it does everything it's got some special cool vibe lighting effects special airflow happening you can sit two next to each other if you want to do a multi GPU stuff. It's got a beautiful backplate on it, the titanium backplate um, with the silver on it. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and gaming, it will do your VR. It will do everything you need it to do and more. Um, SSD went 240 gig. We already know about the SSD. Again, I always throw in that one terabyte hard drive for storage. Uh, we went for a 750 watt platinum power supply, $189. It's exactly the same as the other one, but this is the platinum, not the titanium. And you're saving about $20 doing that. Uh, the monitor, we went for 140 hertz, 44 hertz gaming monitor. It's 24 and a half inch screen size. It's 1080p, obviously, but it's 144 megahertz. Um, I didn't go G-Sync. G-Sync was probably a bit pricey for this build. With everything else that I threw in there, but if you don't, if you don't need um, keyboard, headsets, and mouse and stuff like that, and um, operating system, then you probably can get the better headset there, uh, the better uh, monitor there. Um, again, the HS50 headset, the Harpoon Plus keyboard and mouse combo, and the Windows 10 software all come into a grand total of two thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. So. That is pretty much it for my Geek Off Leash Intel and AMD under $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 build guide for this quarter. I hope you enjoyed it. This has been a very long video for me. Um, as you would see down the bottom, you see your private wish list. There's actually a streaming build that I'm looking at. Um, this case, actually, I own them. They actually can stack, hence why I'm going, I was looking at going that. So this is just a quick thing. Uh, I'm looking at the X370 Gaming ITX AC motherboard to go in there. The Ryzen 1500X processor with the Raspberry. I don't need to overclock this thing um, because it's going to be straight streaming. It's going to be a second computer. 16 gig Ryzen RAM, 120 gig hard drive, uh, SSD, 3 terabyte storage, obviously, being a streaming build. Um, going that platinum power supply for 179 that you just saw on the Intel build. Um, and the Elgato Game Catcher 4K60 Pro. So currently that's $1,754. Don't need operating system and monitors and all that sort of stuff. Nor do I need keyboards and mouse, mouses. That's a private wish list there that you're seeing. It's something that I'll, I'm looking into at the moment. Um, obviously I don't have $2,000 to spend, but if anyone wants to donate $2,000 to me, you can catch me on Twitch at uh, www.twitch.tv forward slash geek off a leash and you can donate me money there and you can help me pay for this um, if not it's okay I do not mind so let's go back to the the main part so here we go the $1,000 build from Intel's 983 the AMD one is 993 $10 more again they were basic builds the under 2000 builds you're looking at 1998 and 1999 so very similar in price and the 3000 and the 3000 like i said with the amd one i was literally stretching to find something to get up to that three thousand dollar price point that would make sense and a lot of it didn't i admit a lot of it didn't all right they are my like i said that's my qu quarterly builds i'm going to try and do another one next quarter uh, mid next quarter 
or when they start bringing out some more techie stuff. Hopefully you saved up enough money to get anything like that. Remember, those prices included the mouse, the keyboard, the headset, the monitor, and the operating system. They will be cheaper without that stuff. Um, if you think there's some parts that I probably should have thrown in there that I didn't think about, um, or there's something new and you want to update it, let me know. Like I said, I'm going to do these every quarter. And I'm thinking of doing, just for my viewers, if my viewers want to put down a wish list that they've got, um, or builds that they, they would love to do, um, that's not over the top, that people can afford, I might actually do a video on what the viewers want. A viewer wish list. How about that? We should do that. That would be cool. Comment in the comment section below. Dislike or like the video. Subscribe to me on YouTube. It's free. Like I said, I am on Twitch. At Geek Off Alicia on Twitch. Um, you can subscribe to me there now. I am now an affiliate. Um, I do have Amazon link code. I can't remember what it is at the moment. I think it's Geek Off Alicia Dash 20 or something like that for Amazon. This has been Geek of Leash. This has been one of the biggest videos I've done in ages. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it reasonable. And remember, it's all in Australian dollars. This is Geek of Leash. Have a nice day.